I'm in Revelation 14. Let's start at 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the foundations of waters. <clears throat> I'm often struck by this term, hour, the hour. For the hour of his judgment is to come. I just wonder how long that judgment is going to last. The whole earth is going to be judged. Everyone in it, everyone who ever lived. <clears throat> Maybe it will take a thousand years. Maybe that's what the thousand year reign is about. A day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. But here it's talking about an hour. That's what Messiah said too. My hour has come. First he said, my, my time has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. And then he said, my hour has come. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. <clears throat> this is strong language. I think that's one reason why people don't like reading the Bible. It's too strong. It's too hard. They can't handle it. The third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup <clears throat> of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, not the lion, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked up, and behold a white cloud, <clears throat> and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for their grapes are fully ripe. <clears throat> and the angel thrust in his sickle oh, dear. into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden without the city 
and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. <clears throat> Now, it is impossible that the vaccine is a mark of the beast. Satan wants you to believe all of his lies. And one of his lies is that there's a rapture. Another of his lies is that Enoch is going to appear and Moses. These are all going to be lying signs and wonders so that you follow after the beast. Anything to make you follow him. He stoops to conquer. He is debased amoral. He is the personification of wickedness and iniquity. And if you believe that if you have a vaccine and for that reason you, you cannot believe in God, then you've fallen for the lie. They talk about a God gene. This whole idea of genes could be just one big deception. I believe personally that it is. You are a spirit. You're not just a compilation of an mass of genes. And it says right here, it says, <clears throat> if any man worship the beast, I'm in Revelation 14, 9. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, you've got to worship this beast by volition. You are sovereign over your will. You will decide to worship the beast when it comes. The beast is not here yet. Satan in the flesh. And if people read scripture, all of it, not just their favorite verses that say two are at the mill and one is taken and one is left. <laughs> they built, they built up a whole doctrine around that verse. Messiah said we would be persecuted for his name's sake. And the revelation is all about how the saints are going to be persecuted and die. And their white robes are going to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It sounds negative. It does not sound nice. <clears throat> and indeed, it is not nice. It is going to be horrible. It is going to be tribulation. That is why Messiah said, Behold, I have told you before. Somebody said to me yesterday, Oh, you're scaring people. You're just scaring people. I said, I'm telling you the truth. I'm warning you. I'm giving you a warning. If I didn't care, I wouldn't say a word. It is an evil time, and we are warned in Scripture that maybe we should keep our mouth shut. But on the other hand, we're also warned by Ezekiel that if we do not blow that trumpet and, and warn people of impending doom and what it's going to entail, then their blood is going to be on our heads. <clears throat>